Hello and welcome to CS++. In this video series, I attempt to make computer science topics as accessible and approachable as possible. In this episode, I'm going to talk about GoTo. And GoTo is not something that you see a whole lot in code today. It is still supported by C and C++, as well as I'm sure some other languages, but it's generally considered not a good practice to use GoTo. Now, I'm going to write some pseudocode here on the screen, like I tend to do in these videos, and we'll discuss what the code is doing, and then we will show an actual example of using GoTo in an old school way. So for GoTo to work, well, let's take a step back. GoTo basically says, go to some location and that can mean a variety of things it's a type of control flow and that's what we're talking about in the videos that i'm currently recording things like go to for each if else they all take some sort of branch in the code so we need some sort of a label we're going to just call this start and then some sort of action to perform. And we need some way of like identifying this thing as a label. And I'm just writing pseudocode here. Um, this isn't any real programming language. So I'm just going to label this. I'm going to say this is an LBL and we'll call that a label. So this program is going to first say, Hey, I now know about a label. It is called start. And then it's going to print Jason was here. And then it's going to go to start and it's going to print this all over again. It'll start right here. It'll say, I already know about that label start. And then I am going to print Jason was here. And then I'm going to go to start. This is an infinite loop. And generally speaking, infinite loops are bad things. Now, depending on how far back you go in my personal computing history, go to was the only control flow that was available. So I've decided for the sake of this episode to go ahead and look at a Commodore 64 basic program. So this represents how I learned how to program. What we have here is line five initializes a variable. It is I and its value is zero. And then I print Jason was here. And then I increment this value I. So it's going to go from being zero to being one. Then just for the fun of it, I print out the current value of I. And then I do a check here. So I don't create an infinite loop. I say, if I is less than 10, then go to 10. And in this particular code, this go to 10, refers to the actual line number 10. So each line has its own line number in this for old version of basic. So this is line number five and the user gets to choose what the line number is. And then line number 10 is the print statement. Line number 15 is the increment. Line 17 prints out that statement of what the current value of I is. And then line 20 does the work. Let's go ahead and run this and play with it a bit. Okay, so if I run this, then I'm gonna get Jason was here, followed by one, followed by Jason was here, followed by two, um, from one to 10. There we go. Now, if I were to change this go to statement, so instead of going to 10, I go to the line 15, where I now see that increment is happening, then I'm no longer going to get the first print statement multiple times, I'll get it exactly once, and then I will increment, and so I'll see Jason was here, followed by the numbers one through 10, like that. Now, if I were to have a bug in this program, and I were to now say, go to line 17, I have just created that infinite loop again because I'm no longer incrementing that value. And this is considered somewhat fragile because if at some point I 
were to somehow change the layout of this code or something like that, like say I change this to line 16 and then I make line 15 blank, so I have something like this. So now the increment is on line 16 and I say go to line 16 and I run this, well, that works. But if this were to say line 15, and I were to run that, then I get this undefined statement. So it's kind of fragile, particularly in this old school way of having specific line numbers that you're going to instead of named labels. But that is the idea behind go to, and I hope that made some sense. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of CS++.